What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast, coming to you, of course, from fanboysanonymous.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and my target to review for this edition is Incredibles 2. Just got back from seeing the movie a couple minutes ago, so I haven't really had a whole lot of time to really process my feelings about it, but uh, I'm going to be just talking to you guys on a whim here, telling you what my reaction was after seeing the film, the positives and the negatives, hereby referred to as the hits and the misses, and the uh, way we're going to do this is we're going to do our spoiler-free stuff, and then we're going to do our spoiler-heavy kind of talk. But before we get even into that, we need to talk about a different movie, actually, because there was a short film that came out before this called Bow, and this one's going to have spoilers to it, because it's a short movie, and I can't really talk too much about it without doing a little bit of spoilers, but I had forgotten that Pixar movies tend to have short films beforehand. I don't really necessarily get to see a lot of them in the theater, uh, but usually by the time I've seen so many different movies throughout the year, I kind of don't feel like paying to see other ones. But with Movie Pass, it's like, hey, you know what? I have less of a reason to to argue against that. So that's why, uh, for even instance, I saw Tag last night and I saw this tonight. You know, Movie Pass, pretty awesome. This isn't just a glorified uh, ad for Movie Pass, but it is great. You should consider it. Um, so I, you know, I, when the thing popped up on the screen and they have this little advertisement saying, Hey, we're sorry that you waited 14 years for Incredibles 2, but it's worth the wait and enjoy the movie kind of a thing. I was expecting it to go straight into that. Well, instead it goes into bow and I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. I forgot that we have like short film stuff and I knew nothing about this movie. Super cute. Uh, damn near almost made me cry when If you don't know what the movie is, I mean, I didn't know what the movie is. Let me give you a little bit of a breakdown of it. It is a story of this Asian couple, more so just this Asian woman, and she makes a bunch of steamed dumplings, and when she goes to eat one of them, it cries, and it develops eyes and a mouth, and then sprouts these little feet, and it's this little kid kind of thing. And it's like, at first it's kind of creepy. So the, <laughs> thankfully I had a good crowd of people that I was watching this with. And the, um, you know, the audience around there, they were reacting so great through things throughout the night. And, uh, this immediately started people going like, what the fuck is this kind of a thing and stuff like that. So the little dumpling <laughs> grows, starts like growing up and stuff. And it's like, there's little spots where, you know, like it gets, um, pat on the head and it's like uh you know the the dumpling kind of like deflates a little bit and stuff like that and she takes care of it and whatever and it shows her marking how how big it's growing and whatever and it eventually gets this little goatee on it and everything it's like this thing's adorable um and it leaves and it ends up getting married to this woman and it's just kind of like wait what like what the hell's going on and stuff like that and she gets all upset and she eats the little dumpling kid. And this was my favorite moment of the entire night. Somebody in the audience goes, she murdered him. And it's like, they everybody's all cracking the fuck up and going like, what the hell are we watching and stuff? Turns out to be a story of this woman that is upset because her son moved on and that he kind of wasn't hanging around anymore. They weren't having fun together. He didn't want to like play with her. He wanted to have friends of his own and then eventually a girlfriend and eventually a wife and he moves out and that she misses him. And then the son comes back and he's got the same little snack that they used to eat together. And it's basically like they reconcile and that's the end of it. It's just this cute little story of something that a lot of people go through. Anybody who has kids goes through it. They, watch their kids grow up. They go from being the whole life of the kid to being just another aspect of the kid's life. And then you have to kind of, I don't know, like uh, reform that relationship a little bit, like stuff like that. Extremely cute little movie. And I, to be perfectly honest, if they would not have had Incredibles, if something would have happened and they would have been like, Oh, I'm sorry. Like we can't run the print or something like that. I would have felt like my money was worth it already. So even though I just spoiled it, Go watch Bao. 
go watch it. It's fucking great. And I haven't seen anything else that'll potentially get nominated for a best uh, short film. But I really hope that this gets nominated at the Academy Awards. And for the matter of fact, I hope that it wins because I really like this a lot. Simple and effective. Anyway, um, so Incredibles 2. We're five minutes into this already, and I haven't even talked about Incredibles. I will start things off with the non-spoiler review. Spoiler free. If you don't want to check out the spoiler section, then you'll already know my opinions about the movie. But if you do, then stay tuned for that kind of stuff, because then we'll, I'll dive a little bit deeper into that. Spoiler free part. Let me preface this and the whole thing pretty much but with one thing. I saw the original Incredibles, the first one, after it had been out in theaters, well afterward, a couple of years, I think, afterward. And to be perfectly honest, I wasn't super duper impressed. I thought it was fine, but it wasn't the type of movie that I really felt like I wanted to go back and revisit. And it, when all these years had gone by and everybody had said, man, they're making all these Cars movies, but they never made Incredibles 2. Well, I had never seen Cars. It never looked all that good to me. So to me, I understood the validation behind it because Incredibles was was fine, but I never was clamoring for it. You know, like Toy Story is one of my top three favorite Disney films of all time. It's technically not necessarily Disney, but you know what I mean. Toy Story, Aladdin, and The Lion King are my three favorites. I don't think anything's going to be able to beat that. But I do value Pixar movies quite a bit. You know, Finding Nemo was good. Finding Dory had some good parts to it. Not really super fantastic awesome, but hey, you know, it's another thing. Uh, there's a lot of, like, positives when it comes to some to, like standardized Pixar movies and Incredibles to me was the type of thing where it was like yeah I liked it and if anybody else really loves it I can see why but I don't necessarily really really love it I rewatched it the other day to prep for seeing this and I felt the almost exact same things that I felt before where the first half of Incredibles is great and then once they get to the island it's not necessarily the most entertaining in the world to me so I was going into Incredibles 2 expecting it to be roughly the same thing, where it's like, all right, I like it, but I don't love it. You know, that kind of a thing. This is better than the first one, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's a more fully functional movie. I think that it handles its ideas better, and it's got a better pacing to it, too. Uh, maybe part of this is that it's approached a little bit more from an adult uh, perspective. And, you know, when I originally had seen Incredibles, it was a couple of years ago at the very least, you know, it was, wait, when did uh, Incredibles come out? It was 14 years ago, I think is what it was. So you figure the earliest I could have seen it was 14 years ago and I would have been, um, you know, like a teenager. So there's a big difference in 14 years when it goes by, you know, maybe I saw it when I was 20. Even if that's the case, if I saw it when I was 20, it was 10 years ago. That's what's, like, crazy about this kind of a thing, you know? So your perspective changes, and I think that certain people should go into this movie. If you're the type of person that you judge movies based off of nostalgia more than anything else, I don't know how you can approach this movie if you love the first one to make sure that you love this one, too. You probably will, and still there's some people that won't, just fundamentally, like, you know, maybe they just don't like the the plot itself or something like that. But I know to a certain extent, people also want everything to just be what they had seen before. I'm approaching this as I didn't really 100% love that first movie. So maybe that's going to be a little bit different. And maybe some people aren't going to agree with me on that. That's fully reasonable, you know. Um, but in my mind, seeing this through an adult's perspective versus a... I mean, technically, you are kind of an adult once you're, like, 18, but you, you really aren't for the most part. It does give you some different viewpoints of different things, and when this story follows the dad aspect to it, I'm not a father yet, but I hope to be at some point, and I can still, you know, I've babysat people and stuff like that, and just, I can understand kind of the weight behind a lot of that, so those jokes hit a lot better for me, and... For instance, one of the jokes, it's a running joke throughout the whole thing, so if you saw the, the trailers and stuff, you already know it, it's not a spoiler, is this idea of new math, and that he's like, why would they change math? It's just math, and that, and it's like, yeah, it makes perfect sense to me, because it's like, if I find little kids today that are like, 
talking about new math kind of a thing. And I'm just like, this seems fucking stupid. You know, like what, what, why would you change math? It's math. It's two times two It's just whatever. That's what it is. Like, how can you change something as simple as that? And, uh, even dealing with the idea of like having a daughter that's trying to date and stuff like that. I've never had to go through that process again, because I've never had a kid, let alone an adolescent kid. But at the same time, I can understand the viewpoint of a father going through that because I have friends that have had kids that are going through stuff like that or, you know, different things like that. So that appealed to me more than I thought that it would. Also, I think it was just more mature in a lot of different ways. And, you know, when they're dealing with stuff in that first movie, they do have like an attempted suicide attempt and they do have the idea of don't meet your heroes because they'll let you down and a lot of mature themes. And they carry that on with this one too. And I really appreciated that because it's a lot easier for an adult to get into a kid's movie. If it's got mature themes, even if it is silly and have fun and, you know, really experience it as well as we could versus if it's just a silly, stupid kids movie. Because there are plenty of silly, stupid kids things. And for the kids themselves that they're targeting, it's perfectly fine. But good lord, is it mind-numbing. You know, fucking Dora the Explorer. Try to watch two episodes of that back-to-back, and you're going to want to blow your brains out. This is not the case. This is the type of movie that I would take my nieces and my nephew to see. And even if they had never seen Incredibles, I think that they would have a lot of fun with it. And I had fun watching it. So... I really, really recommend it. I think that you should watch the first movie and then see this one for sure if you have not seen either of them. But at the very least, if you are on the fence about seeing it, maybe just go ahead and give it a shot. You know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't say that this is going to be on my list of like the best movies of the year that I'll have seen by the end of the year or something like that. But so far, it's actually one of my favorite ones that I've seen. You know, I saw Solo, and I was disappointed in Solo. I thought that it was fine, but it really didn't resonate with me. And the more that I take to kind of let that sink in, the less I like about it, you know? And Tag was fun. You know, I watched Tag last night, like I said. So that's cool, too. But this was actually, like, a good movie. I really enjoyed it. And I don't want to talk about uh, specific stuff, because that's going to be in the spoiler part, but... Essentially, is this a hit or a miss? This is a hit. So, as I mentioned before, spoiler part. Now, if you don't want to know what happens in the movie, uh, I guess don't listen to this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But hopefully, if you are the type of person that listens to spoiler stuff, it's not going to bug you too much anyway. But to get into more specifics about this, we have the story of the Screen Slaver. Love that name. It's campy, but it's not can't be stupid it can't be clever kind of and he is the villain of the whole thing and it turns out that it's actually one of the people manipulating the whole situation which you could see through right from the start i mean it's it's a kid's movie still like you're still gonna have a, a basic plot and it's somewhat cliche in a lot of different ways too like you can tell what's going to happen in a lot of different times but that doesn't mean that that's necessarily bad you know a lot of people have this mentality where they say predictable is bad or change is good. Just black and white. Just anything that's predictable is bad. And anything that is new and different and wasn't predictable is automatically good. I think that that is one of the stupidest things that people have in the world because that ignores the idea of change for the worse or predictable versus unpredictable yet bad. I would rather go with predictable and good than I was surprised and it sucked. You know what I mean? Because for instance, if you tell me, well, you would have thought that The Last Jedi was predictable if Luke would have been this great Jedi master and he would have just taught Rey and it would have been just a standard, you know, copy and paste type of deal. Then I go, yeah, that would have been predictable. But what we got instead, I think, is stupid. Would you also say unpredictable is good for the sake of just good, if I were to tell you that, say, the next Batman movie, he gets killed in the first five minutes of it, and then it follows the story of some other character that isn't Batman, and go, well, I never would have thought that a Batman movie wouldn't be about Batman. Like, it's it's just stupid. So, if you are the type of person that thinks 
predictable is bad. No matter what, even if it's a good story, it's still just going to piss you off. You're not going to like this movie because it's predictable. It's a kid's movie. You're going to be able to see from the very first scene that this is going to happen and then that's going to happen and then that's going to happen and so on and so forth. Um, you, you know, when you are being told the story of Violet and Tony and, you know, trying to get her first date and stuff you know this movie isn't going to end with the two of them not going on some kind of date. You know that the issues with the superheroes are going to be resolved at the end. And you, you know, it's, you can tell who the villain is. You can tell that baby Jack Jack is going to go through some kind of process where his powers are useful instead of just annoying. And Dash, for the most part, doesn't get too much to do. Um, he's just sort of there. So that would be one of my misses, actually. Dash could have maybe used a little bit more. But Dash is, I guess, sort of like how Hulk is used in Avengers. He's a punch-up character. He is used for moments here and there, yet not necessarily an arc 100%. So I did enjoy Dash. He was still a hit, but his lack of a story, that was, that was a miss. Another, uh, I guess if I had to start saying just misses here... A miss for me is maybe there were too many scenes of, whoa, look at that. That's Jack Jack's new power. Oh my God, I didn't see that coming and stuff. And after a while, it's like, all right, I kind of get the point a little bit. Like we can sort of move on. But pretty much everything else was a hit. I mean, you you bring the Edna Mode character into there. Edna Mode is great. And her scenes are just awesome. She is a fantastic character. Everything about that's great. Uh, another hit is... The action in this. The action is fucking awesome, actually. It's pretty damn good action. Uh, I liked the Frozone's shaft theme. Like, that was funny. Uh, I thought that another hit was that they didn't make both the uh, male and the female that were running the whole corporation and stuff, that they weren't both involved in the, uh, the villainous activities. I thought that that was good because I was like, all right, well, it's going to be one of them. Or it's going to be both of them. And more so throughout the movie, it was like, all right, well, it's probably just going to be one of them. Um, but they could have made it a double kind of thing, and they didn't go in that direction. So that, that I think, is a hit. Another hit for me is just the dad taking care of the kids kind of... It's normal jokes, so I guess you could say maybe it's a little bit on the lazy side because we've seen it a million times before, but at the same time, that's not really a miss because they executed it well enough that they made me laugh. And I always recommend if you want to go see a comedy, go to see it in the theaters because it's so much better when you've got other people laughing alongside of you and everything. And those same people, like this one guy in particular, the one that was all like, yeah, she murdered him and all that other kind of stuff for the bow thing. At one point in the movie, I can't remember which part it was. Something happens though. and He just goes, yo, what? People were just like, really enjoying themselves and the majority of the people that were there in this auditorium because I saw it at 10 30 at night were all adults you know so that was kind of fun too he didn't have to deal with the little kids and everything in the crowd crying if there was like some kind of a scene that would upset them or whatever um let's see uh Elastigirl uh character totally a hit um no complaints with that basically the same kind of like the characterization is the same as the last time. So if you like the characters the last time, then you're going to like them this time. Uh, voice acting. Great. I love Samuel L. Jackson in particular. It's Frozone. That's just like so fun to listen to. Uh, the other ones too. I mean, some of them are like, I didn't even know that that was Sophia Bush being void. It really didn't matter. They could have pretty much gotten anybody else. Isabella Rosalini was ambassador. Oh shit. Huh, all right. Well, didn't know. Yeah, it's just a matter of very rock solid movie. Like, I have no real complaints about it for the most part. Like I said, some of it's a little bit cliche and a little bit standard, but that's not a bad thing. And I enjoyed the idea that with a simple movie like this, you can appeal to a lot of different people. If you go into these movies liking superheroes, you're going to like superheroes in the movie. If you go into it liking a family film, it's a family film. If you go for the action, the action's good. If you go for the comedy, it's the comedy's funny. If you go for little kids, there's stuff for them. And if you go for adults, there's stuff for them too. You know, little 
nods that little kids aren't going to get and, you know, different things like that. I enjoyed that a lot. And this was really just a fundamentally rock solid, good movie. I mentioned before, I don't know if it's going to be my favorite movie of the year, but hey, Fanboys Film Awards at the end of the year, if I'm going through this and stuff, it might end up giving it a couple of different things. And, you know, uh, it wouldn't shock me in the slightest bit. At the very least, I can't imagine that this doesn't get my best animated film of the year. So I could see that happening with the uh, the other films too. Um, the other films, the other uh, awards and stuff like the actual Academy Awards. Like this could get nominated for best Academy, uh, best animated film. I could see that being the case. So yeah, mostly all hits. Very very minor misses, and if they are, it's stuff that's completely forgettable and stuff that's forgivable as well. So overall hit for a movie, 100%, go watch it, uh, even though I spoiled it, you know, to a certain extent, and hey, the the Underminer is still around, so uh, maybe we get number three a little bit sooner than 14 years from now, but if we get it when I'm, you know, in my 40s, then maybe I'll have a whole new perspective of something else like that, I don't know, but that's going to do me in for now, let me know what you guys think about Incredibles 2 and Bow. And uh, whether you agree or disagree, we'll keep the discussion going in the comment section below. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel here on Facebook and ring that little bell for notifications for the next videos that come up. I don't know what they're going to be, but hey, they're going to be coming up at some point. So why not, right? Always check out fanboysanonymous.com as well because there's things that aren't on the podcast side of things that I do there, like Six Flicks picks. And I've been keeping up with the Weekend Geek bringing that back. This is the second week that I had just done this. So, you know, if you want my quick opinions of like some different news stories, that's where you're going to find that. And if I get a chance to, I really hope to, I want to try to do more fan tracks, audio commentaries, and maybe bring back the group meeting podcast, get some other people on here to talk about some different things, maybe even create a Facebook group for other people to talk about some different things like that. You know, any random ideas like that that you guys have you'd like to see me do, I can't make a promise that I'll do it. But at the very least, if you put it out there, I'll know that you're going to be interested in it. And then I'll give it a shot as much as I can. Um, I think that's all I got to do as far as plugs go. You know, if you are listening to the Smack Talk podcast and stuff, you know the Smart Cat Moment thing. So I don't need to run down on that. But yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening to this, everybody. Give this a like. Share it around if you want to. And anything else you want to do like that, hit up the Patreon is another thing I should plug, actually. If you want to kind of help us keep the lights on or help me keep the lights on, it's a one man operation here. Let's be honest. And, um, you can also buy a t-shirt on T public and red bubble. If you want to show your support that way. And all right, now I think I'm actually done the plugs. <laughs> this has been another review point. I'm Tony Mango and I'm a fanboy. See you next time. Everybody geeks out.